everyone, Tori the Crafty Girl here, and today I'm going to show you a super easy beginner friendly project for your circular knitting machine. We are going to be making this windmill tote. Now I already have a video. Um, I'll actually link that here and in the comments, uh, that is for this exact bag, but it's a boho theme and it's a little bit more advanced. And I don't go into all the details with how to cast on and off and that kind of thing. Um, but I've heard from a lot of you that you are looking for beginner friendly projects. So this is one of those. Essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the tube setting, which is super great when you're first starting out. And we're going to make four tubes all the same length. In this case, we're going to make them 80 um, rows long. And then we're just going to stitch them together like this. And it's going to create a really adorable tote bag. So the previous video that I did, I actually had done this project on a 32 pin mushroom house from Centro. Since then, I think it's been about a year since I recorded that video. Um, I work almost exclusively on my Addy products. So I'm going to be using this Addy 46 pin king size today to make a really big bag. But I did want to go through the whole entire process um, from how I'm using the waist yarn, casting on, casting off, um, and then also going through the whole process of putting it all together. So stick around if you want to go through and learn a couple of things and uh, at the very end have an adorable uh, windmill tote to show for it. Also, if you like content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. There's always new projects coming out. Um, uh, shorts pretty much daily, longer format, really when I get inspired. Um, but I would love to have you join us here on the channel. So let's start. I just finished a commission for a customer and I had these yarns left over, these colors. So I figured I would make them a special tote bag to put the project in and shh, it's a secret. So these are the three colors I'm going to be using for this project. I will say with 80 rows on tube setting, you could most likely get two tubes out of a skein. Um, so you probably need at least four skeins um, for this project. And if you're going to do additional colors, you can certainly do that. We will not be going through color changes in this video because again, I want this to be as user friendly and beginner friendly as possible. So these are the colors we are going to be working with. So for this project, we are going to be using waste yarn. Now, if you're not familiar with waste yarn, it is a few rows of contrasting yarn that you're going to be removing at the end of your project. The reason that you will want to use waste yarn is to help get you some really nice clean ends. So here's what it looks like when it's on the project. We'll be removing all of this. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. I'll show you the whole process but it is a really great idea and it's not really that complicated. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it can seem a little overwhelming, uh, but it really makes a huge difference. So I would recommend using waste yarn and this is a great first project to try that with. So I'm just going to use this contrasting color since I'm going to be using the white yarn um, for this tube right here. There's a few different ways that you can set up your machine, whatever is comfortable for you. Some people like to start on this first black pin here. Some people like to start on this pin right here. This is the pin that I always put my yarn under when I'm first casting on. And casting on is the process that we do when we are casting our yarn onto our machine. You'll also notice that I have this pin right here marked in black, and that is huge. I have done that on every single machine I have. Um, and the reason I do that is as you go around the circle, it gives you a really great indicator of where your final pin is. Um, that way you can plan on color changes or when you're finishing a row. Um, these do, the Addies do have counters, but the others like the Centro, um, the smaller versions do not have counters, row counters. So this is always a good idea for many, many reasons. So I definitely utilize that on every machine. So to cast on your machine, what we're going to do we're going to see that we have this little tail here. We're going to pop that right in the center and then we're going to go under. Okay. So this is just holding on to the yarn for us. Essentially it's like a little extra finger. So holding on to that yarn and then we're going to go behind. Then we're going to crank at the same time. We're going to go in front. We're going to go behind. We're going to go in front and we're going to do this all the way around our machine and be very careful that you do not miss any. 
I also recommend doing this lightly. Do not do this tightly with your yarn. It can impact how the um, yarn works. It may get stuck, it may um, split. I've had that happen. And it also makes a really awful noise if you do it too tight. So essentially again, around, in front behind, in front behind, in front behind. And yes, this is this process is necessary. I have seen in um, different Facebook groups, some people try to cast on without doing this. It's not going to work. It just won't work. Okay. Oh, I didn't even show you what I did there. So now that we're back at the beginning, you can see that there's that little, there's a loop, that loop right here. We're going to go back under. So we're going to be under here twice and we're going to put it through our yarn guide and we're going to snap it closed. Okay. So that's all there is to that first step. Now we're going to use our handle and we are just going to crank around a few times. So we're going to go slowly the first time around and it is normal. You're going to see blanks here. So don't pay attention to that. We're just going to continue slowly the first round or two. Okay. Now we're back here and our pin. We're gonna go around again. This time we can go a little bit faster and you'll notice that it will not give you as much um, tug as it was the first time. And then I, we're back here at the beginning and I'm gonna go around one more time. All right, so I just did four rows here of my waist yarn. Now, the number of rows you do is really up to you and really up to the pro project because I found that for me, I like using shorter rows of waist yarn because it's easier to remove. But if I'm working on a garment, which is what I typically work on, um, then I'll make it a little bigger because I am going to be, you know, pinning it to my mannequin and working it in different shapes before I actually finish the ends. So it really is up to you. Um, but a good rule of thumb is about five rows is standard. Now, as I mentioned, I just did four rows and now I'm going to put the end tail. I'm going to take it out down here. I'm going to take it out of the yarn guide. Make sure it goes under that pin that you started with, okay? And I'm gonna put the rest in the center. Now I'm gonna teach you something a little bit more advanced, okay? You do not have to do this, but I will tell you, I live by this because this makes pulling off that end waist yarn so much easier. So right now I'm just looking for another contrasting color. Okay, so I have this one strand and it is short. It's not enough to go around a few times, but it is enough to go around one time. And that's what we are gonna be doing. Essentially, we're creating a, a ravel cord, um, which at the end, or a rip cord, I've heard other people refer to it, um, when you're casting off uh, with, or when you're removing your waist churn, it lets you remove it so much easier because when you cast onto your machine, waist yarn is a lot harder to remove. Um, at the other end, you can just simply pull on it and it unwinds very quickly. But when you're just casting on, it does take a little bit more effort to remove. So I found that this adding an, uh, one extra piece of yarn makes a big difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put again, my yarn tail in there. And then uh, another tip is if you are changing colors or changing yarn, always hold on to both strands at the same time obviously with a different hand, um, at the same time as you crank. And that way you can give it a little bit of tension here so you don't have any looseness because the looseness is what tends to um, allow that yarn tail to slip out. I've, you know, and then you might drop stitches. So I just always hold on to this just to give it a little tension. And once it's down, now I just go all the way around one time. Now I barely have enough. Okay, so that's scary. I barely have enough to get back here. Um, again, I try to reuse all of my yarn. So uh, next time I will remember that I don't need to leave this long of tail so that I can continue to reuse this. So let's just go a little bit further. All right, now it's time to add our working yarn. So I've mentioned we're gonna be using the white. And all we're gonna do again, I'm gonna take my yarn tail, however long of a tail you think you need, 
in this case, it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to pop it in there. And then this one is really important that we hold on to this yellow one, because if we don't, it certainly can slide, you know, right out because it's a little bit shorter. Okay. So now it's under here. Before you go on to your next step though, guess what time it is? It's time to set your counter if you have one. So down here, let me see my little mess down here. On the Addy, we have our little counter right here, okay? Here's our handle to reset it. So before we forget, we're just gonna reset that back to zero just to ensure that we've done that. Now that we've done that, and we're holding onto our yarn, now we're gonna make sure it falls under there and now we're gonna crank around again the first time with any color change i do recommend going a little bit slowly just watching all of your pins making sure that there aren't any issues coming up and here we are back at the end um, also a really great best practice is that first time around when you ever um, whenever you do a color change just always make sure that that first loop is pushed down because it has a tendency to want to stick up here. So that's round one. And that's it. And now we're just going to continue to knit all the way around and we're doing 80 rows for this project. So that's as simple as it is from this point on. So we're, I'm going to go ahead and knit 80 rows and then we'll meet back here and I'll show you how to cast off. Okay, so I wanted to stop right here for a moment and show you a really good learning opportunity. So when you work with circular knitting machines, specifically the Centro, um, a lot of times you're gonna have drop stitches or tuck stitches that you'll need to fix as you're working on the machine. Um, this is just what comes with working with these machines because it just, it just happens. So you'll notice that it's right here. You'll see that two pieces of yarn were taken under the little um, pin right here. And we're going to go ahead and fix that. Now, I will be totally honest with you. If I wasn't doing this video, I wouldn't even worry about it because this project is going to be a tube folded in half. And uh, this would be, I would just put this on the inside of the bag so it wouldn't be noticeable. But I do want to show you how to fix it because it's, like I said, it's super, super common. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this all the way back to our yarn feeder. All right. So this is the pin right here that we are trying to get to. And we want this in this position here. So we're going to go one more. Um, we don't want it too high. We want it to be a little bit flexible. Okay. So you'll see it moves a little bit because we are going to start. Okay. And again, just to point out, here's the, here's the two yarns that are together here. Um, and the reason that's important is once you have this off the loom, this will start to look like a, a gap here and it'll look like, it, it'll just look like a mistake, which it is. Um, so we're gonna start by pulling off. Okay, so we're gonna pull off all of the yarn from our pin. Okay, but be very careful because at this point it's live, which means that if you pull it, all of these stitches will come undone. So what I like to do is I'm going to grab this row with my left hand or your dominant hand, whichever you're using. And then the first thing, or I guess the next thing is we need to just kind of pull these stitches out. So we're just removing these stitches and here's the one that has the double. So we'll take both of those stitches out. There we go. And then here's our live loop. Okay, so we don't want to drop this. We are going to use a crochet hook. Your machine came with a crochet hook. So I think the Centros came with a pink crochet hook. Um, I don't know if the Addies come with one, but you can pretty much use any size. I like this size. I find it to work the best. So what you're going to end up doing is you're going to make sure all of those pieces of yarn are on your hook and then the loop is at the top and then make sure that they're flat you don't want any overlapping so it should be flat like this and then to fix this all we do is we're going to take the loop under the first loop okay and then we're going to pull it through so we're going to take this up put it over pick that loop up pull it through we're going to do this all the way down So 
So now we just have one loop on our hook and now we're gonna pull it right back over the pin and then we're gonna push it down, making sure that the yarn goes under this pin right here and on the pin on the side as well. And now we're gonna continue, just make sure that drops. We're going to get all the way back around and now you can see it is completely i can't even see where it was because it is now completely fixed and everything is even and great um so anyway that will happen to you period it happens no matter what this is an 80 row project so the likelihood of it happening is very high um also i'm using a kind of a chunky yarn which tends to get tucked more often all right let's keep going Another tip is if you're working on really long panels or really long tubes, it is going to start to pool in the center. And what you'll find with that, if you don't do anything with this, it could cause a lot of problems with your knitting itself. It might cause them to get tucked a little bit more often, maybe drop. So anytime you have a long project, if you're not um, working with uh, a station that allows it to fall through the center, then all you're going to do is you're going to pick it up and do that. That's it. And then you'll just continue to do that the lo as long as it gets. Um, we are on row 54 right now, so we're pretty close uh, to the end, but definitely something to point out, especially as you're just starting off, because it's really an important step that if you don't do can cause you more problems that you don't want to have. All right, well, here we are. We are coming up around 79, so we're coming up on our last row here. And here's our little black indicator and you don't want to go past here so this again this is where we started this is where we're ending we are now at 80 once i just go over a tiny tad there we go our counter just turned to 80. so we are going to cut this yarn okay i'm going to leave this eh, i don't know about 8 to 12 inches again the length of your um, end is really up to you, but you want to make sure that it's long enough so that it doesn't accidentally slip out. So now, okay, we're going to pop that in the center. This is where we're going to use waist yarn. Once again, we are not going to use the rip cord method or the, um, the ravel cord method because with this end or with this end when you're casting off it is actually super simple to take off because it just unravels uh, so we are going to okay this is our this is our waist yarn so we're going to put that in just as a reminder we're going to hold on to the end tail here okay so it's under here and it's going to go under here And then we're going to go around again slowly for the first couple anytime there's a color change just to make sure that you don't have any issues All right, so I just did five rows here. Now here's the cool part, because this is such an easy thing to do at the end. So now make sure it's under that last pin. We're gonna shut our yarn guide. And then now we don't have to hold on to anything. All we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to uh, knit until it falls right off the machine. Almost always gets stuck on one so no big deal pull that off and we pull it out and that is it 
Now we have four pieces for our tote. Again, you could just do four of the same color, but I think it will be super interesting if you use different colors. Um, the original boho bag that I did was all one color. It was a cream color and then it had some braiding detail on it and it was more of like this boho vibe. This is just a sports vibe is what I'm going for. So these are the colors. Um, so let me show you how to finish your ends and we're going to do this to all of them first thing when you pull your um tube off of your machine you do want to just give it a little stretch in fact you can stretch it after um you finish the ends but it's always a good idea to stretch it and then we're going to pick one end to finish first so let's just start with this end here this is the end that has that extra piece of yarn which is our ravel cord so this is going to be um, the bottom this shows us that this was the bottom that we cast on uh, so then we are going to do this so you can count and i've seen people get very um very, uh, what do we call it? detailed with this. Um, uh, and I, I've seen people take stitch markers and go through every single loop on the side to make sure they don't miss any. You may need to do that at the beginning. Um, I feel like it's a lot of extra work because even if you miss like one loop, you can easily go back and pick it up. Um, but if you don't pick it up, it's gonna unravel your whole, your whole work. So it's really important to be mindful of that. So for your piece, you're gonna find um, that gap. So this is the gap. This is where we had that first pin we cast on um, and then the last pin that we cast off over here. And what we're gonna end up doing is we're going to fold your piece in half. And this is where um, some people do count just to make sure that they're perfectly lined up. Um, but I, so these little yellow loops right here, I'm just eyeballing it and then lining them up. Okay, and I'm just gonna do it just like this. For you, just starting off, yes, I may recommend counting, but for now, we just wanna make sure that it is folded in half with the end, with this tail yarn over here. So now, when you open it up, you're going to find you have a little loop, or you should. And if you don't have a loop, a single loop here, maybe it looks like this. Just turn it. Turn it one direction. And then we're going to take our crochet hook. In fact, actually, let me grab a bigger one. We're going to go with a number five. Size does matter when it comes to crocheting um, for your ends. And I always say just pick whatever you have. That's true. You can use whatever you have. But I found that for the yarn that I'm using, this really thick um, yarn, it does make sense to use at least a five. So I'm using a, a five here. So I'm going to pick up this loop on the very end. And then I'm going to go through one side and pick up that loop and then I'm going to slip stitch. I'm just going to pull it right through. Then I'm going to come to this side. Okay, I'm going to pick that loop up. I'm just I'm trying to do this at a weird angle. I'm going to slip stitch and pull it through. And we're going to continue going back and forth all the way to the end. So again, pick that up, slip stitch. And this is why it's really important that you do not miss any. One other tip while I'm showing you this is your waist yarn, um, the size of your waist yarn, uh, or I guess the weight of your waist yarn also plays a part. So if the waist yarn that I had used um, had been like a really low weight, or maybe it was like a smaller weight yarn, it would make it a little bit more challenging for me to finish the end because what happens is the yarn starts to hide on you, um, so using this about a similar size waist yarn is definitely going to be a great tip, especially when you're first starting out. All right, I'm gonna continue all the way back and I'll meet you back here at the end. So now we are down to the very end and this is where you can get, oops, this is where you can get some of those loops that wanna hide underneath the yarn. So here, I'm gonna pick that one up. Okay. I think, I think that's it. I think we got them all. And then the last thing we're going to do 
to secure that loop right there is take the end yarn, yarn over, and then we're just going to pull that through. Okay, so now it's time to remove the waist yarn. So since this is the bottom and we have a ravel cord, what we're going to end up doing, um, in fact, let me just show you why we're doing this because I think that's a really good thing to show you. Let me find the end here. Well, I can just kind of show you, per, for example, um, typically uh, when you cast off, you can just unravel this with your fingers like this. This is not going anywhere, okay? This is really stuck on here. So for, for contrast, on this side, if I start playing with this side, it's going to just start unraveling. So I'm like, don't want to touch that side anymore. But let me show you that ravel cord that I use. So we have this one red I'm going to do one side at a time. So I'm going to pull that middle loop on the side and then I'm just going to pull out the single piece of yarn from one side at a time. Just seems to work easier that way. On smaller pieces, I'll pull them out at the same time, but okay, so there's one and now we're going to pull out the rest. Okay, here's our ravel cord. Save this, reuse it for another project. So now watch the magic. That's it. Pull off your waist yarn. Again, save that for another project. And then before you do anything else, look back and forth. Make sure you did not miss any loops because sometimes it happens even to the most seasoned of us. Um, if for some reason you did, let's say right here, we missed a loop. What I would recommend, what I do, is I would take my yarn tail over here, I would weave it through the inside, pick up that loop, and then tie it off, um, and then I would just hide the tail, okay? So that's side one. Now we need to do side two, which is gonna be the exact same process, but before you do that, you wanna make sure this is flat and not twisting at all. Um, I also wanna show you here, there is a little bit of split yarn, so it's really not that noticeable, um, but since this is going to be a bag with an inside and an outside, as I said before, this will be the side that we put on the inside of the bag. So right now we're just flattening it out we wanna make sure that it is not twisting or turning at all. Okay, and now we're gonna come back over here. You can always just fold it in half too if you wanna double check just to make sure that it lines up. Um, also the fact that we are working from the exact same spot when we cast on and cast off really helps as well because if you were just to fold this in half at the same right, the same spot there, it should, it should work out perfectly. Okay, so this side, again, we're going to do the exact same thing, pick up one loop from the end, pick up this side, and we're going to continue to do this all the way down. Now for this end, there is no ravel cord. And again, you don't need to use one because this end is super simple. You can just take the end of your waist yarn and then unravel it. And again, reuse your waist yarn. Don't just throw it away. I know that the word is waste yarn, but reuse it. We don't need to add to our landfills. Okay, again, let's just double check. Good. All right. And this is our first rectangle for our windmill bag. I'm gonna finish the other three pieces on the ends and then I'm gonna show you how to put the whole bag together. Piece number four. So this is how it's gonna go together. So what we'll end up doing is the first thing is gonna be to stitch the center. So this is gonna be the, the you know, in the middle of the bag right here. Um, one thing I would also encourage you to do right now is if you had any pieces that uh, maybe had flaws on them on one side, this is where you wanna make sure all those flaws are together. Uh, so then you can decide which is gonna be your 
outer and inner pieces. So I think one of these pieces, let me just turn this over. There's still dog hair everywhere. My dog, tell me, let me know in the comments if you have a dog, if you're a dog person. Um, if so, do you have a shedding dog? Um, luckily she's only like 20 pounds or 18 pounds, um, but she sheds like crazy. Okay, so this one is fine. There's no flaws, so that one doesn't matter. This one had a flaw, I think that's it. Yeah, so we'll leave the flaw side up for now just so I can see it. Let's see, this one, yep, there was a little tucked stitch there that I didn't get, so we're gonna leave that flaw facing up. And then I don't think there were any, ah, that one has a little tension issue right here. Perfect, okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab some yarn and we are going to stitch these together um, whichever way makes sense. So you'll see that I do have um, yarn that's not long enough. In fact, I should hide that tail. Is that long enough? Uh, almost. I might just, it might just make more sense to get um, fresh yarn here. Although this yellow is long enough. Okay. So what you'll just want to do is what it, how, if you have enough yarn or if you want to get new yarn, just stitch from here to here and from here to here. Okay, so we're just stitching it together. Um, you can do this whichever way makes sense for you. Um, because they are going different directions, doing a mattress stitch is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Um, but again, whatever aesthetically you want to do, you could even crochet this. So let's say this was going to be the, this is the inside for me, but if this was going to be the outside for you, um, you could do crochet it together so that you have this nice little seam here. Again, the possibilities are endless. So we're just going to go, I'm going to go back and forth between the loops at the top. It's hard to do, it's hard to do this in this angle. So um, I've had a number of people comment on my crochet technique as well as other techniques. Um, and yes, my technique definitely gets a little wonky when I'm trying to record it on camera. Just trying to make sure that I can get the right angles. So I am doing essentially a mattress stitch is what I'm doing here. Kind of. Pretty much. I don't want to miss any of these because you want it to be secure. Okay, so I'm going to do that all the way down to that end. Maybe. Hold on. Do I have enough to go down there? I might. So what I'm, I think what I'm going to do, again, this is how my brain works. I'm going to go to the center and then I'm going to go up. I have enough yarn to do that. Yep. I'm going to go center and then up, and then I'm going to use the yellow and go center and then up. So that would be the easiest way for me. So I'll meet you back here when that part is done. So now I have finished all of the seams. Again, this is going to be the inside, so it doesn't, I'm gonna tuck all these um, or hide all these a little bit later. Uh, one, another tip, I'm gonna keep giving you all my tips today. One thing that I have found is um, anytime I'm working with yarn, I tend to wait to hide all my tails until the end because sometimes you might find a use for them. Um, you may need to reinforce a corner or something like that. Um, but I did want to show you the other side. So this is the outside. So look how cute. So this is what the outside or the bottom of the bag is going to look like. So now we are ready to, in fact, let's turn, let's turn this back over. We're ready to finish uh, assembling <laughs> the whole bag. So now what we do now, this may seem confusing, but I promise it's not. So you have your windmill, right? It looks like a little windmill. So then what's going to happen is this side is going to stitch to over here. Okay. Stay with me. This side is going to stitch to over here. This side is going to stitch over here. And then this side will stitch over here. So <laughs> it, 
looks a little crazy now, um, but you'll start to see it come together as we get all of these seams done. So again, this is really up to you how you want to seam this. Um, I'm just going to do it like this and I am going to get some stitch markers because these ends, um, are going to wiggle around because they are the tubes and it's not like the end ends. So I'm going to get some stitch markers and put those in play. And then I am going to do a mattress stitch up each of them, um, to attach them. And so let's, and I don't have enough yarn here and I don't have enough yarn here to go up one way or the other. So we are just going to use some extra yarn. Okay, so let me just show you how it's coming together. Okay, so that's the center. Here's our first seam, and then we're going to continue around. Now that we have all of our seams done, the last step is going to be to hide all of our tails. And as I have mentioned before, I think in this video too, um, you're just going to put them between the layers. It's This is one of the easiest, anytime you're working with tubes, it's super simple. You're just putting them between both layers. Give it enough space. Maybe. <laughs> and then you get it stuck. Pull it through. Cut. And then when you tug, now they are completely hidden. And I'm going to do that for all of the loose tails in here. I'm just going to hide them on the interior. But just to give you kind of a preview of what the bag is going to look like. So here, here's our little sweater tote bag. Um, so it is going to be a, a, like a nice big size, which is awesome. You can kind of visualize here. Um, your straps, you'll be able to decide how you want your straps. So you can go um, from like this one to this one or this one to this one. You could even do just big straps. You can have a big strap here and a big strap there. Uh, so your straps are really gonna be up to you. Now, let me show you a few strap options that you can do. Um, so uh, you can do, if you are comfortable with crochet, you can do something like this and you can add uh, little clasps here. So I have this on this bag. My first bag that I made, the boho bag that I was telling you about, here she is. Um, I actually do use her on a regular basis. So she is, she is a little, a little dirty and a little pilly. And you know what? I don't care because this is one of my favorite bags. Um, the straps I did for this one, I ended up stitching on, um, some I-cord. So I have really long I-cord. Um, and this is what it looks like in just a plain, single color and this is with the 32 this so this is definitely a little bit well a lot smaller um but this is what this one looks like i also added a little button closure on this one so that's another option for you it's full of my stuff it is my day-to-day -day bag and for this one what i think i'm gonna do i actually already added so i have these d these are d rings o rings i think these are called a i don't know these are these are keychains i had i I went to a thrift store um, a little while back and they had a bag full of surprise items for like $2. I don't know what it was. Um, so I opened it up and it was all of these old keychains that were just really, you know, awful. Um, but I saved all of the hardware. So now I just reuse those. So for this bag, what I think I am going to do or what I've already done is actually make sure. I'm gonna have to bend that back because I bent it too far. So I have these little rings here and then I can bring them all together like this and then I can use another, like a pre-existing strap. Something like that. Maybe not that. Maybe I'll do two on one and then two on the other. Something like that could work. Um, we could also lace, we could do I-cord and lace it through. Um, there's just lots of options. So let's look at the whole thing together. All right, so I wanted to show you the size of the bag. It's like the perfect beach bag or, you know, I, I love the size. Um, I'm really pleased with it. And, uh, oh yeah, you can see my absolute nightmare. This is my cricket station. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you on a human, 
I'm 5'4", just for kind of reference, the actual size. And now let me show you some of the cute little details. So I ended up for the straps, I did actually something a little different. Um, I actually used my knitting machine and I put it on panel. Well, actually I didn't even put it on panel. I just used six pins and I did um, a little flat panel in cotton. So I'm using a different yarn and that's so that the cotton doesn't have a lot of stretch um, or I'm using it because cotton doesn't have a lot of stretch just to help. And then um, I had, again, leftover yarn so you know you had to make a pom-pom right um also what I did with the strap is I made it long enough let me come around here to the other side I had already showed you that I added these little rings here which makes it so easy to change up how you wear this bag um so I just have this one uh, folded in half but I could also unsnap one end and snap it on this side and on this side and just make it a really long strap um, so there's lots of options. I did add a little custom. This was for my customer um, because this is the, the team, the Cowboys, Wyoming Cowboys. Um, and then uh, this is the interior of the bag. Again, so much space. This is... I. If you are just starting out, this is an amazing beginner-friendly project, and you will use this. And as you start to increase your skill level, some other things you could do, you could add surface crochet um, and add some designs. You could, um, you know, stitch on patches to this. There's just so many options. So hopefully you like this content. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what you thought and if it was helpful at all. I love doing these videos for all of you. And until next time, everybody, see ya!